Hey brothers and sisters, today I want to talk about the third, the third kind of promise which God has promised us. He's promised us forgiveness, okay? Now, there are many people who are still uh, wondering, have I been forgiven or will I be forgiven or what's really happening to me? Especially those people who go to uh, the book of 1 John, 1 John 1, 9, there are so many people who go there and, and they think that it's like... Uh, God is telling us all the time, let's, let's, uh, let's confess, let's confess and let's ask for forgiveness all through. Now, let me tell you something. Let's, let's first go to 1 John 1, 9 and we see what it says. Uh, 1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Okay. And if we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Now, if we confess our sins, he's faithful enough to forgive us. Now, what does this uh, text mean? Because it's really been a confusing text, especially to people who think that we have to be forgiven over and over and over and over again. The Bible says that we were forgiven once by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. He forgave us once. And now, since we are forgiven, once you're forgiven, then what does it mean? You've been forgiven and you've trusted the forgiveness. What happens is a very simple thing. You become a child of God. So if you're a child of God, then how again are you going to become an unchild of God? Are you, or are you going to uh, be, let's say for example, you adopt a child today and you tell him, okay, you're my son. You Peter or James or whatever, you're going to be my child from today. You sign the papers and the government gives you the, the kid. Now, can you wake up today and say, no, you're not my child anymore because you maybe uh, uh, he did something that you did not like? No, he's still your child. The only thing is that they are good children and bad children. And the Bible promises us that once we are saved, we are saved once and for all. We cannot lose our salvation. There is no way you can lose your salvation. In Hebrews 6, it tells us if, if, uh, if we could happen to lose our salvation, then we could, not have, we could not get it back. We can't get it back. It says those people have tested the Holy Spirit they, and, uh, and they have departed from it. If they test and they depart from it, from the Holy Spirit, then they can get the Holy Spirit back. That meaning, then there's no hope for salvation if we can lose the Holy Spirit. And remember, in Ephesians 1.13, it says that the Holy Spirit is, is sealed inside you unto the day of redemption. Now, when is the day of redemption? It's the day that you'll be redeemed of this body, this sinful body of yours. And of course, Ephesians 4.30, it says, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit in whom you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Now, 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 my friends, if, if you're sealed and you're told you're sealed unto a specific day, how can you lose your salvation? You see, now, when I come back to this uh, uh, 1 John 1, 9, which talks about the promise of forgiveness and where so many people don't really understand about this forgiveness thing that we are told, the Bible here is very clear. It tells us for those people who claim that they are, they, they are saved, but they are not. They need to come to their realization and realize that they need to be forgiven. They need to receive the atonement that Jesus gave and that they'll be forgiven. And after you get that forgiveness, it will not go. It is there with you. Everything else that you do, Anything else that you do that, that uh, which concerns the flesh, like let's say you lie, you you you, you beat someone, you 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 um, whatever kind of sin that you, that you will do, that one, it's all about the rewards in heaven. You will lose your rewards in heaven, okay, if you continue doing bad things. But if there's no place where it says that. Because I lied to someone, I'm going straight to hell. No, you can't. Because the forgiveness was given once by Jesus Christ. And after he's given us that forgiveness, he has assured us that he will never leave us, neither will he forsake us. So now, let's, let's look at that first John. Eh? Uh, and uh, first John verse 6, chapter 1 verse 6. All right. It says, if we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie. And do not the truth. So there are those people who say that I have fellowship with God because 
uh, I do good things, I am a good person and people love me and uh, I, I, I offer a lot of things in church and I'm this kind of people that uh, uh, people are always saying, you know, uh, Keith, you this guy, this guy has a good heart. You think you have fellowship with God because of your good deeds, then you're lying to yourself. If you say you have fellowship with him and you walk in darkness, walking in darkness is what? Meaning you've never seen the light. So where is the light? The light is in the gospel. Jesus says, I am the light. I am the light of the world. So if you, if you, um, if you have never met Jesus, if you have never seen the light of the world, if you have never had fellowship with the light, who is Jesus Christ, then you're deceiving yourself. So the Bible is very clear about this. It tells us, let's confess our sins, okay? He's faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So the only way you can be cleansed from your unrighteousness is by believing in Jesus Christ, believing what he did for you, believing in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And that way, you will have accepted the light and you're no longer in the darkness. I don't know if you're understanding the point. Now, let's come to the promise of forgiveness, okay? He's promised us that he's forgiven us. And sometimes when we find ourselves in things, it's, it's like... Um, there are times that we feel as if we are falling out of grace. It's like I'm, I'm sinning too much. It's like I'm doing so much. It's like I have no fellowship with God anymore. It's like I'm so far from, from God and I feel, it, it, I, I don't feel his presence. There's, there's a, sometimes when you feel something like that and, and you cannot really explain, you feel like, it, it's, does really God remember me? Now, this is for you. Let's go to Romans 5. Romans 5 verse 20. It says, moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, okay? But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. So, the law came so that it can reveal sin. But now, where too much sin is, there is already too much grace, okay? So, where you feel that... Uh, it's like you have too much sin or things are really big and too bad. Now, remember, God is giving even much more grace to cover the whole sin. Because he says, he, uh, he says God has given me, you. And there is not even one person that God has given me that I will lose. Now, let me give a good example. Have you ever gone to sometimes and you and you and you see it's really hot? Maybe there are, there are days which is really really hot, and you feel the weather is too hot today. Now the hotter it is, it means the much more rain, uh, the, the much more rain will drop. You, you, you see, uh, here in Kenya we always say that that kind of heat will produce a lot of rain. You see, the more the heat the more the rain, you know, the lesser the heat, the lesser the rain. That, that's exactly how grace of God is. The more the sin, the more the grace, you understand? So meaning where there's a lot of difficulty and challenges and, and problems and you're feeling, oh, I'm really lost and I'm really off. And it's like, I don't know if God will even accept me. No, understand that he loves you even more. The weakest child is always the much vulnerable. If if a father is walking with his children and there's one weak child uh, who maybe ca cannot walk properly or has some condition, is the one that the father is always holding uh, close to him. He, he, he will even carry him at the palm of his hands uh, when they're crossing uh, may maybe a swamp or crossing a river because this child is more vulnerable. So he, he will put us at the palm of our hands the moment he realizes we are even much more in uh, uh, feeling uh, away from him or, or in full of sin and things like that. And he will try to correct us and he will try to bl bring us even closer. So the moment you feel that um, it's like God is not forgiving you or things are really working out against you and it's like you're, you're, you're just lost in some things. Remember that God has promised us forgiveness and he has said that he will give us more grace more and more grace will abide, all right? So don't you worry, don't you worry. As long as you have, uh, you know the light, the light is Jesus Christ, you believe the gospel, everything else is the work of the Holy Spirit. We are told that the Holy Spirit, his work is to convict us unto righteousness. The Holy Spirit does not condemn us. He convicts us unto righteousness. He tells us, okay, my son, my daughter, 
this road you're going to get lost use this road he does not tell you when you're going to that road you're going to hell no he does not do that he just tells you don't use this road my son uh, this one might be disastrous to you use this other road so he convicts us unto righteousness that's the work of the holy spirit so I believe you've been able to understand uh, the promise of forgiveness. And the only way you can receive this forgiveness is by believing the gospel. The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. I always like to repeat this for those who have never heard the gospel. The gospel is not found in Matthew, Mark, John, and Luke like people think. Those are the gospels. And the gospels only explain the life of Jesus. The gospel is what Jesus did for us, what Jesus did at the cross for us, which is the death, burial, and resurrection. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. It says, this is Apostle Paul, is the one who says this because he's the one who was uh, revealed to the gospel. Now he says, moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which you received, and wherein you stand, you stand in that gospel, by which also you are saved, you are saved by that gospel. If you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you believed in vain. Believing in vain is believing in your own things and believing uh, there are some good works that I've done which can take me to heaven. Like those people think, because I've been baptized, I think I'll go to heaven. No, that is believing in vain. Now, let me continue. For I deliver unto you first that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Now, Paul tells us how that Christ died. How did Jesus die? He died at the cross. He shed his blood for the remission of our sins. Without shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. For those people who just say, I believe in Jesus in whole. No, they are believing in who Jesus is. That's the message of the, to the Jews. They had to believe that Jesus is their Messiah. But right now, the Gentiles, we have to believe in what Jesus did for us. What did he do for us? He died for our sins, okay? Because if you don't believe that Jesus died, his blood was important, then it means you have not received the atonement because the Bible says without shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. And Jesus had to shed his blood. And that's why his blood is very important. It's not like the blood of bulls and cows and goats and sheep. No, it is very, very important. That's why uh, John the Baptist, when he saw Jesus coming to be baptized, what did he say? Behold, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world? Why did he say he takes away the sin of the world? Because he was to become the sacrificial lamb who would take away the sin of the world. Are you understanding me? So having understood this, let's walk in, uh, in the spirit. Let's walk in the forgiveness of Jesus Christ and let's live by faith because the Bible tells us don't live by the flesh. Live by the spirit. Understand that you're forgiven and nothing can take you away from God. Nothing can separate you from the love of Christ. God bless you.